was about two or three. And then she went on to get her master's degree and um, her PhD in family studies. We have focused on the eccentricities of my mom. Oh, mom, you know, jumping off a cliff and bruising up her hip and... She can be um, sarcastic and pedantic. I absolutely love watching her with the grandkids. Do you feel like your mother is a successful mother? Well, the first thing that always comes to mind with Mary is creativity. I mean, it's, it's her forte. I didn't get hit so much by the pranks. I mean, I do remember my biggest prank I was so proud of. Uh, in the middle of the night, my friend and I rode our bikes over to the library and painted our favorite quotes from books and some from Alana's letters from her boyfriend on the gate with flowers and we were so impressed with ourselves. And then early in the morning, we went to girls camp. So Alana, my sister, goes, and clearly these are quotes only I would have done. And so my mom was facing Alana, and I'm behind her on the stove, grinning. And Alana's blaming me, and I was proud of myself, but my mom said, you always blame Mary. If a child of mine did that, I'd know I had failed as a parent. So it's like, ugh. Well, I'm not confessing this to you then. So I guess that was too big of a prank. Can you talk about getting engaged to your husband? Well, I was only 18 when we started to date, and I was writing to two missionaries, and he was exactly the kind of man that I would have thought was the kind of man I wanted to marry. And I don't think I would have called him, but his, his roommate called me and said Stephen was really depressed. So I called him and he asked me out, and I just felt pressure. But then, it had been nine months, he was gone for the summer, and so I, my heart was being softened. Uh, and so when he comes back, I know something's up. Well, I tried to plan out the proposal, so uh, I invited her to uh, go with me to general conference in October. We, he invited me to conference, but we went late, so I knew we wouldn't get in. But he had a blanket, and we're dressed up. So we went up to a park just north of the Utah State Capitol. So we listened to it on the radio in Veterans Memorial Park. Then afterwards, he sits up, and I thought, here it comes. I said, I want to talk with you for a little bit longer, and she said, okay, what, what's up? And I said, <laughs> um, come my love and, and be with me, the best in life is yet to be. And then I proposed to her, and I think she was not quite expecting it, and it was a little bit of a surprise. Uh, so she had to think about it. So we had a nice little speech proposing to him, and I said, I'll tell you tomorrow, but I'll I think it's yes. There was no call in the morning. There was no call in the afternoon. That's because I had to go home and write letters to my missionaries and tell somebody else. I had a date the next day. So he was starting to really wonder because I went over to his church. It was like in the evening. I went to church that evening. Uh, and she uh, showed up for, uh, for church. I didn't know that she would. And then after uh, church, why she I told him yes. Now we had the twins a year later. I was going to school too. But then I got pregnant four months later with number three. And she was a delight, but it was, my body was really worn out. If we hadn't been able to move her home to her parents, I don't know how she would have gotten by with a first pregnancy. She was so sick in bed that she couldn't raise her head up without throwing up. As long as I can remember Mary, uh, and for years afterwards, she said, oh, I, I couldn't have lived without having children. If I couldn't have had my own, we would have had to have adopted. Peter, was my oldest son, was the big challenge because he thought in a weird way. 
During high school, Peter kind of drifted and I think he would agree he was doing some things that he uh, ultimately didn't want to do. And I think my mom provided a sense of foundation or an anchor. I had come home drunk in high school and uh, I had vomited a lot throughout the night. I mean, it, it was alcohol poisoning, quite frankly. And the next day, after getting up and she drove me to school, she told me about a dream that she'd had and really a vision. And she talked about how, you know, she, she just foresaw mistakes I could make. And if I continued to go this path, I would make. And I knew she was right. It ended with, with my suicide. And that was really scary because I didn't know. When we went to get their graduation photos, the twins, I thought this may be the last formal picture of him. He could have just as easily gone to prison three months later as he, as he stopped suddenly and totally changed. But I knew from my training that that was highly unlikely, that he would just stop cold. She helped me change, uh, but really what she did is she helped turn me to Christ and he helped me change. Well, Mary, I, in my opinion, as a really outstanding mother and grandmother, uh, because uh, she, first of all, loves her children and her grandchildren. Nothing is more important to Mary than her children and grandchildren. Um, but growing up, my mom, uh, she, she was, I would say, very tough, very principled. So I always knew where she stood. I always knew she loved me, but I don't think she ever babied us. Uh, she wasn't, uh, I wouldn't say she was sweet and motherly, even though she always took very good care of us. The generation before me, the moms were uh, bragging about how perfect their kids were. So my generation was not like that. And I didn't want to be like that, but I think I went too much the other way, not letting them see enough. Uh, too much of a sense of humor, too light about things. And, and looking back, I think I should have shown more of that. How would you describe your relationship with your kids in general? Just maybe, I think we have a real solid foundation. They know I love them. Uh, they know I'm interested in them, but I think because I probably don't call them as much or some of that, I feel like, with my boys particularly, maybe a little distant. Yeah, I thought you might want to, curious to see your thoughts on this video, this memory. There is a nurturing side that I don't think that uh, we see as much. Um, but I remember when I was in sixth grade and we lived at the top of a cul-de-sac, but at the top of a hill. And so I remember, for whatever reason, I was particularly tired that day. So rather than riding my bike up, I got off and I was pushing it up. And I put my hands on the handlebar. And I re remember looking up the hill and I saw my mom. I only, I only saw my mom maybe run three times in my life. <laughs> and she came sprinting down the hill. I was like, what's going on? And when she arrived at me, she, I recognized she was saying, are you okay, Eric? She thought I had been hurt or something had happened because I had because of the way I was walking up the hill. And I'm not even sure if she remembers that, but that was something that I have always remembered because it meant she was looking out the window, she saw me, and you know, in the moment she thought that, you know, I was um, suffering, she you know, she came uh, sprinting towards me. And I think that was my earliest impression of, I guess that, well, that is one of the most vivid memories of the nurturing side of my mom because I've seen that um, many times since that time in my life. Um, when Cassie died, um, when last summer I went through some real struggles, um, when I spoke at my mother-in-law's funeral, all these times I saw that my mom recognized when I was suffering. And in each instance, she came sprinting back into my life in every way she could. That is a real sweet memory. Um, 
My mother, Mary, is kind, so kind. She's so generous. My mother is an example of someone who is resilient, who has persevered. Um, her health hasn't been good. She often doesn't feel good. And she takes one step, puts one step in front of another. I watched her be very creative in many different ways growing up. Um, whether it was writing, whether it was working in the garden, whether it was telling a story, whether it was teaching her children, she kept at it. She wasn't um, a flighty um, person when it came to teaching her children. The, the message that I would share with my mom is that one, that I love her and her family loves her. Um, and I would say that she did a great job. Success as a mother is not only are they capable of supporting themselves and a family and contributing to society, but that they have a relationship with God, that they rely on Him, that they don't just believe He's real, but that they rely on Him as part of their daily life. One of the reasons I think she's so successful is because she does what works. If something doesn't work, she is willing to change the approach. She always made sure we had family home evening. She just always found a way. And as a parent now, I remember that and I think, well, I'm just going to do what it takes and it's working with my kids. But that all started with my mother. She's very spiritual, she's very practical. And uh, I, I just think she, she gets it, what really needs to happen. But she's very effective in knowing how it gets to be done. If I get a compliment on something I've done that's worked, I have to laugh and think, yeah, I learned that from my mom. I've been impressed with how my mom has changed her approach to her relationships with her family. Um, over the years, she's realized that some things don't really resonate. Maybe some things rub uh, certain family members the wrong way. She's really changed her approach and sometimes her personality um, in order to, uh, to create better relationships with, with family members. There were certain things that just were not a part of the discussion. But I also saw, even with some of those rules, I did see her altering her approach. Um, and this isn't maybe a great example, but piano was so important to my mother. We all had to do it. But she also let me stop playing a little earlier than most of my siblings. I think she realized as important as it was to her that she recognized that perhaps there were other ways to reach me or to, uh, to push me forward. She set the trajectory of of my life and all of my siblings. She set the trajectory, she taught us how to get there, and I think that we've seen some of the fruits of that labor. She's a fantastic mother, and I think we have a fantastic family, in large part, probably most importantly because of her. I'm hoping her uh, children and grandchildren uh, really understand what a deep loyalty and love she has for each of her children and grandchildren, how much pride Mary takes in all of uh, our children and our grandchildren's accomplishments. Peter is, a, for example, a huge and great example in focusing on the highest of goals despite lots of oppositions. Amy and her writing, Andrea in uh, so much that she does. She's, she's a Renaissance person in, in my opinion because she does so many things that are interesting and exciting and takes such good care of kids. Eric has accomplished so much in his law profession and uh, just in his ordinary life. He's a, he's a fun guy from dancing or telling stories or <laughs> entertaining the rest of the family. Almost as good in push-ups and arm wrestling as Patrick, who uh, uh, in, in a similar way has excelled in many, many areas. He's uh, done well in his uh, work and career and uh, raising a family. and They've all been very, very uh, uh, successful. Love you, Mary. You're the spice of my life, and it's uh, been fun for the last 50 years. <laughs>